Hi, welcome to the Raging Feminist again, and uh, this is Jen and Mindy. Mindy's a volunteer to, to be here with us today. Okay, so the title of this vid is uh, Alternatives to War, or um, yeah, Alternatives to War. As I've mentioned in a previous video, in this day and age, if anyone, any one person, entity, or government is still feeling the need to declare a military war, military strength, military might war on another country, whether it is just as a ruse or it is just for in intimidation only, or if they really do mean business and they do want to um, make some damage. Any one entity who is still thinking of this in today's climate and environment and um, progress of our society is being a little bit archaic, is, is still living in the dark ages. It's archaic. And at this point, there have to be other ways to solve to solve issues between countries, to solve deadlocks in agreements, to negotiate things. So, like, sometimes negotiations have been underway for, for many weeks, months, etc. Maybe even sometimes years. And when it comes to the juncture of actually thinking about declaring war, maybe what we need to think of is, what kinds of things could we do instead? We could wage a war, but what kinds of things could be could be implemented instead, instead of a military strength war? What could we do instead? Because if you think about it, many wars have been fought before in history, and often what the outcome frequently comes down to is the toss of a coin. The random stacking of certain odds against others. Sometimes, yes, there is more strength on one side than the other, but still sometimes, sometimes things seem to go the other way. So freak, very frequently it's down to a coin, uh, a coin toss. Listen to me, a coin toss. It's that random sometimes. So if, it's, if it has the propensity and the potential to be that random, how about we make it fun? How about we make it entertaining? It could be put down to a football game. A football game. How hugely are football games in stadiums punted and marketed? They are huge and they are also immense money generators for both the teams, the countries, tourism, everything. There could be a war in terms of sport. Even something like similar to the Olympics. It could be an Olympic war event, but instead of choosing soldiers to be blown to bits and have their blood splattered all over the show, you could have athletes competing against each other. It could be this much fun. It could be this much fun. All the related parties would need to do is just to agree that whichever game is won on fair practices, fairly refereed, with impartial umpires, umpires and referees, as long as it is fairly judged, the partaking countries or entities all just would need to agree that once the outcome is uh, judged and ascertained and it, it's clear that who is won, then they comply with the, the set of policies laid out. It could be that much fun. It could be, it, it wouldn't mean the loss of millions in a war. Millions, thousands, hundreds, whatever. At this juncture, in this day and age, we have come too far to still be spilling blood over, over fisticuffs or over wars, over, over disagreements on high, from very high level, where the people actually fighting each other, actually coming into contact, actually have no idea, actually have no real holding or understanding of why they're really doing it. In this day and age, it is archaic and very entitled and assuming from all entities and governments expecting their people to do this. In our sporting world, we have a plethora 
of different sports that could be used to get to work this out, to work out a result for wars or disagreements between countries. It could be swimming, it could be tennis, it could be pole vaulting. Like I said, I mentioned it could be a whole Olympics. It could even not even be serious. I mean, there are some amazing games, sports games, activity games, uh, team building games coming out of Japan. Have you ever seen that human Tetris event? Do you know what I mean? Have you seen that? Have you seen binocular football? If you haven't seen binocular football, you are in for a treat. You need, you need to go and look this up. Type in, find YouTube, find any browser and type in Japan binocular football. This, this kind of thing is what we need for countries to be fighting wars against each other. People losing their limbs, people losing their eyes, people losing their whole heads in this day and age is ridiculous. We should not be doing this. Governments and higher entities should not be expecting us to do this. And people on the ground level, grassroots level, soldier level should not be agreeing to it because you know full well, you actually really don't really know why you're fighting. Not really that dude over the fence who you don't really actually have any particular problems with. Um, it could be MMA boxing, mixed martial arts. Everybody, well, males love that. It's very male-centered. It's, it's very tactical. It demands a lot of split-second decision-making. There's a lot of critical thinking there. It's hugely entertaining. You, so yes, mixed martial arts. It could be paintball, paintball. It could be an escape room thing, an escape room tournament. How about that? It could be televised. How much fun could this be? Heck, it could be a gladiator event. You know where these super fit, super strong athletes get together and they have tournaments against each other? Why not World War gladiator event? We don't need to have bleeding soldiers with no arms and legs and a chemical warfare fallout. Um long-term effects with PTSD. We, we no longer need this. This does not need to be a thing. It, it could be a complete thing of the past and it could now be seen as a complete form of entertainment and something that people could look forward to and the respective countries could make a heck of a, lo a lot of money out of it, actually. There is so much potential here. I don't know if anyone else has been looking at this, but this could be huge. Even if the countries didn't even feel like um, spending, putting that much expenditure and planning into it, it could come down to a wrestling match. It could come down to a chess match. Choose your fighters, choose your players against each other. These people wouldn't have PTSD afterwards. They wouldn't be missing limbs, they'd be fine. They could go back to their, 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 um, their families and their countries with the same kind of Wait as if as how they'd done in the Olympics. It would be so similar. There's not much difference. It could even be something as unserious or um, enjoyable as a, I don't know, a tickle fight. A tickle fight. I don't know if anyone's thought of this yet. Some people are really more ticklish than others. Some people don't have those kind of reactions so much. Get two of them in a room, in a match, or um, in a stadium, and it could be like WWE watching this. Even WWE, like world wrestling. Actually, that could be a little bit, uh, that could be quite, mm, that could be quite violent. But I mean, at least it would be, it wouldn't be thousands of soldiers. It would be one fighter versus another one. Or one fighter that agreed to versus another one. If we wanted to be really progressive, we could say that there could be no violence and it would just be purely for entertainment value. Uh, tickle fight, uh, pillow fight, massive pillow fight. You could even have a team, a pillow fight team versus another team in one room. Let them let, let them go see, see who, I, I don't know, you could work out the rules for this. You could work out rules for this. It could be so much fun. We do not need to have people's brains blown out. In this day and age, what are you thinking? Unless at some in, in, in some way actually people really do want to see that. And then and then what does that say about us at this point? 
See? This is why the aliens don't talk to us yet. This is why they don't talk to us yet. We need to figure out other ways of doing this. <laughs> and it could be fun. It could be really, really fun. So how about we give it a go? Anybody listening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't even need to be physical. It could be computer games. It could be, I don't know, Duke Nukem. It could be uh, Counter-Strike, CS. It could be, choose a game. Pick a game where there are two sides. And then invigilate it. Bing bong, there you go. No blood spilt. No mothers losing her sons. Brothers, sisters, everybody coming home or not even leaving. How about this? How about it? Good, no? Should we go for it? Hmm? Hey, this is a quick addendum. Um, the question you have to ask yourself, and you must keep coming back to, to this. This is the question. Why is it so important that flesh and blood, brains and bone, need to be blown apart? If international countries, the international arena, has not already thought of this idea yet, why are they still relying on flesh and blood soldiers? Why? Why, in this day and age, is it still so important that flesh and blood, brains and bone, are blown apart? on the front lines. Why is it that buildings must be destroyed? Why is it that museums must go up in flames? Libraries, public facilities, why is it so important? We have the online world now. Let's use it. Yes? <laughs>